All right, so everybody, welcome. Today I got uh, Gray Wolf and Grimes joining me. And if Gray Wolf, if you'd like to tell people who you are. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Gray Wolf. I am most commonly known as, I suppose, the voice of Jester AI, Heat Blur's F14 Tomcat Rio. Um, other than that, I've been around DCS forever and made, uh, got my, I guess, cut my teeth in the mission editor way back when in early lock on days and uh, eventually um made a bunch of community missions in the after the a10 was released and kind of got my name out there to an extent uh with a lot, of, a lot of people flying those missions originally they were called separatist aggression and it was set of course in the black sea uh map or the caucuses map and it was just kind of a five part four or five part uh mini campaign for the a10 that Everyone loved and adored because my ancient self, it was the first time that uh, we could do voiceovers, add like uh, audio clips to the uh, actual missions. Okay. Um, so I kind of capitalized on that. And that's kind of one of the fun things of the time that we were able to do uh, that was new and exciting. And Grimes, of course, uh, made a mission uh, notorious uh, slightly uh, prior to me releasing those called On Station that I'm sure he'll talk about a little bit, but um, yeah, after that, I uh, got more involved with ED testing and um, beta testing, et cetera, and just eventually started uh, lending my voice to the game, doing a lot of uh, single player campaign characters, uh, voicing notoriously like Pedro Benito from the UN uh, Huey campaign, and then uh, a bunch of other voices since then. Training missions like the Saber, F-86 Saber training missions, the F-18 Hornet training missions, you mm -hmm. may recognize my voice as well, uh, and a few other uh, campaigns, etc. So, And you'll probably hear my voice in uh, some upcoming F-14 campaigns as well. So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, it's good to have you here. And then Grimes, it's good to have you here if you want to tell everybody who you are as well. Uh, yeah, Grimes. Uh, been playing DCS not quite as long as Grey Wolf. I mean, I technically, you know, lock on is when I started playing. He was way before that for me. Anyway, anyway, yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so I uh, been a tester for like over ten years at this point, and I do a lot of uh, mission scripting, maintain mission scripting tools, SL mod, the Hoggett wiki with all the documentation on how to use the scripting engine, and just, you know, hanging out on the forums a lot, answering a lot of people's questions, and you know. All that you're, fun stuff. You're in charge of the Hoggett wiki? I'm not in charge of it, but like the, the scripting aspect of it, basically I kind of rewrote it, the whole oh, thing. Oh, okay. I got you. So because basically like, you're, you're Mr. There's Big like, Time Scripter. There, yeah, there's like two main docs, and I just kind of like organized it kind of based off of how uh, Bohemian Interactive's Arma wiki is uh, organized. Because, hmm. you know, they, they have a lot of scripting functions in that game. Anyway, um, so yeah, as, as Grace said, I made on Station, which was kind of a ludicrous mission with like 700 triggers that broke all the time. And then, <laughs> uh, and then, and then eventually that was the triggers originally. And then eventually, we yeah, every, every row is scripting and it, Hey, it, it works. What do you what, go figure? Cause you know, if then statements can only go, thank you so far. I don't remember playing on station. Was that a downloadable or was that, that was like the infamous, uh, where you get in the a 10 and you get to an area on the map and you are, once you get to that area, you're essentially on station. And uh, the mission would automatically check you in, and you would hear the infamous wizard, this is Tusk. Mm -hmm. And um, the audio file in the game, he developed uh, originally well, yeah. with the triggers an entire conversation uh, trigger set that put together sentences. <laughs> yeah, it's like armor style, where like it was one or two words, and then... Based on like what the threats were, were assigned at an area, so like AAA CM sites, it would, you know, a guy would list that off in as audio rather right, than just being just text. Right. Because like back then, we didn't really there wasn't a scripting function for alt text either, so you couldn't uh, combine messages. Okay. So, so you could do anything, any fun formatting. So it's literally just like a single message for each you know threat type and all that, and 
it didn't get as far down to saying like coordinates for where targets are at, but you know, it displayed that the coordinates of the text blocks. You just had a you know, like had a minute or two to type them into the CDU on E10. And so, how long yeah. ago was the on station mission? Like, how long ago was oh, that now? Like 11 years, like I don't know, yeah, seriously, 11 10 and a half, 11 years ago, but okay. yeah. Grimes was Grimes doesn't give himself enough credit, but he's been instrumental, especially uh, with advancing, helping advance the scripting uh, aspect of DCS as a whole, along with, you know, speed um, way back when, you know, him and speed really working hand in hand with some of the developers, uh, especially early on to add a plethora of scripting functions that uh, obviously go way above my head uh, and really he's gone he's done a lot for dcs world as we know it yeah i mean i didn't start until 2016 so i was kind of late to the game but i didn't really heavily get into dcs until like 2017 mm -hmm. so um you know, at that point, there was already other modules, and I think the what the Hornet was out at that point was um, just no, it was just, just Fox ones and twos or something. Yeah, it was just the Mirage. It wasn't close. It was just the Mirage, the A10, and then the Harrier released. Oh, okay. And then uh, I was still playing when it was like 1.5 and 2.0 or 2.1. Yeah, I had, I had two separate like installs. Yeah, 2.5 was when the Hornet came out, I think. Right. No. Oh. I well, think so. yeah, I think so. It was it was after they joined because I don't yeah, remember doing final stuff on one point five United install. Right. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Gray Flag server, and you have two servers. And I was wondering if you could give a brief description of the server for anybody that doesn't know what the Gray Flag server is. Sure. Uh, yeah. So Gray Flag is basically a vision. Uh, that started out as wanting to take our DFA Sunday campaigns that we do as a squadron, Death from Above, where we try to fly, you know, on Sundays in a exotic campaign, co-op campaign. And basically, Grimes and I wanted to kind of take that aspect where, you know, he had done obviously so much uh, scripting functionality of being able to save the state of our squad campaigns. Um, that we do on Sundays. So mm -hmm. like we'd fly the mission and we take out all kinds of targets and, uh, through his, uh, scripting, um, it would save to a file of what we all killed as well as, and he was able to incorporate, uh, essentially a, a bubble spawn aspect. Uh, bubble spawn is kind of the, a word that people from Falcon, I imagine might know is, um, where you kind of get close to a certain area and and baddies spawn in de uh, depending on like your your distance as well as the uh, uh, severity of the, th the threat. Um, so we kind of really kind of tested that and honed that in our Sunday campaigns. And I had this wild, crazy idea of um, essentially making a DFA dedicated server at one point and kind of uh, you know, lightly pitched this idea in the form of a massive fucking document uh, that I wrote up and then handed over to Grimes and went, hey, is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to my shock, uh, he came back not too much uh, later and said, uh, well, yeah, it's it's all it's all doable. And so after many bricks were shat, uh, we uh, by me, uh, that we might be able to do something like this. Uh, we essentially have gray flag what it is today. And it is a co-op, um, with some PV, uh, PVP elements in, in it, but you know, majority, it is a co-op driven campaign, uh, semi, I would say semi dynamic in the aspect of, you know, you, you play it, again each time it's the front lines have moved and you never know what's exactly going to happen um so we have two servers and uh the first server that came out was the syria server where it's kind of set in 2005 and it plays on the storyline of our squad campaign that we did on sundays 
where we have this big Intel document and kind of backstory, et cetera. Um, and it's set in 2005 where we have to liberate Lebanon uh, from the Syrian army. And they have uh, kind of moved in and occupied several areas of Lebanon. And then there's kind of a militant insurgent um, element to it in the south end of Lebanon. So as we progress more north, uh, the, the more um, the Syrian army gets involved as well as the Syrian air force. And, but essentially the way that we had, we kind of wanted to go about it is, is just as realistically as we possibly could in a co-op driven story aspect uh, as to where, you know, on kind of, for example, on other PV or PVE servers, um, there may be like just waves of enemy fighters coming at you and they just don't really have any kind of rules. So they just kind of endlessly lemmings themselves towards you. And we, you know, we wanted to, one of the things that players are uh, kind of flabbergasted or taken back by is the AI aircraft uh, really react in a more realistic way. And that's just because we've given them a little bit of constraints to an extent, but with those constraints, it actually makes them a little more open-ended in how they react um, because they have a wider set of rules to go by as a, as instead of, you know, if they only have, say, one cap task, well, then they're just going to go endlessly across the map and, and hunt you down. So as to where, you know, we've kind of set them up realistically in a sense that, hey, they're going to be patrolling their... Uh, zones their areas that they're going to be responsible for the syrian air force is not going to want to realistically lemmings themselves into the u.s fleet right for example um so so yeah um using grimes uh whole engine he's kind of built for this we have a capture and advance kind of setup where we have uh, objectives and within the objectives we have capture zones and it's all done via the f10 map so when you log into the server you look at the f10 map and you can basically see what areas are being fought over um, and so we have kind of a lattice system um, where or kind of like a like a moba to an extent where you have like lanes etc right um where say like lattice a is along the coast of lebanon and lattice b kind of goes up north through the becca valley and you know both lattices kind of progress north as we invade uh, and uh, liberate lebanon so we have basically all kinds of different aspects of dcs that we uh, just wanted to make possible in gray flag and one of the biggest aspects that i think has surprised both grimes and myself is the uh logistics aspects of it where with it being a capture and advanced uh system you know you have aircraft and helicopters kind of clearing out the objectives uh killing armor and 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 clearing out the capture zone areas and uh friendly helicopters you know flown by players have to fly in troops and or vehicles to capture these zones and grimes has been able to uh make it select like the troops when you dump off the troops they'll automatically get in formation and run to the nearest kind of capture capture zone to um to cap that point and once all the capture zones in an objective or have been captured and held for an x amount of time then the objective uh, moves forward along that certain lattice so um and so yeah it's kind of a Massive capture and advanced campaign, uh, as well as the enemy is reacting to the player. They're going to be sending convoys uh, in the form of like a supply and or QRF uh, that are going to be heading from a certain uh, base area to reinforce the, their front lines and try to take back capture points and just make it a little bit more dynamic. Um, we have two mods that are required to play on Gray Flag, um, being the C-130 Hercules mod, as well as the UH-60 uh, Blackhawk mod. 
And we kind of went for that just because uh, it makes it uh, a little bit more obtainable for new players, even though it is a mod, you know, very easy to install mods, uh, drag and drop essentially. But, you know, new players can come in and they may not have a module just yet, but they can take one of these free mods like the Blackhawk or C-130 and still be still hang out with their friends and you know, kind of fly and, and be way more valuable than they think they are as a new player uh, being being able to fulfill that logistic role uh, and et cetera. So, and then of course, in the, that's the Syria server and the PG, the Persian Gulf server has four lattices uh, as to where the Syria server only has two. And the PG server is, you know, obviously... Uh, it's a massive piece of terrain, so uh, the flight times are a bit longer, but we also are doing uh, certainly what we can to mitigate that to an extent with having some forward spawns of of uh, bases that you can essentially unlock. Um, and so, and yeah, I, I can let Grimes talk about kind of the logistic uh, aspect on on how he was able to kind of do some of the uh, massive monumental tasks of. <laughs> the amazing engine that we have. Yeah. Well, I was just also add that like the UH sixty is great. Which I think we added that just because like you know this, this is a mission that's built off the campaign we had flown and you know, the Apache had to come out and we're like oh this UH sixty mod that's cool and it's a bit, it's just a bit better than flying around in the UEs and MI eights you know yeah right there there should be a UH sixty like module in DCS but you know time will whenever that comes out, if it comes out, whenever it'd be great. But, and then also the C-130 mod had, you know, added the ability to transport munitions around. And that was just kind of almost needed really for the Persian Gulf server, just because like, you know, the flight distances are so much larger and there's a lot right. more air bases you can capture. Well, and kind of what we wanted to do is like bases to capture kind of the thing that we ran, to, ran into on the Syria server is uh, players would, advance the front lines and eventually capture Beirut. And, you know, of course, helicopters would be able to spawn at Beirut. Well, that immediately opened the door of um, friendly fixed wing aircraft landing at Beirut International and instantaneously topping up on any weapon they can get their hands on because the uh, base's inventory or the warehouse system and uh, had unlimited munitions. Mm. So it kind of felt a little bit cheese to us that, oh, we just unlocked uh, this fresh base that is now on the front lines and fixed wing aircraft are landing at this international airport that tracers are still flying over mm. and topping up off of, uh, top, topping they're jet off with with fresh fuel and then uh you know 80 80 billion jsaws etc on a base that we you know just captured so we we love the idea and aspect of the hercules mod being that um you know all those crates and whatnot that they can stuff inside there uh they can bring to a forwardly uh freshly unlocked base to supply that warehouse that that base's warehouse um with those munitions um in, instead of just instantly unlocking unlimited munitions uh, there is a starting amount that each base has um you know after you unlock it uh there's a starting amount of munitions and the reason for that is the servers are on a 15 hour uh restart cycle and when someone uh new to the server may first hear that they may gasp in that oh my gosh 15 hours i'm so used to blue flag resetting every three hours or or right. etc or four hours and um you know we chose 15 hours and we've obviously done a lot of testing in and of that and you know we monitor the server fps and it really is performing quite well after 15 hours and it could go probably longer if we wanted it to because you know, Grimes has been able to, uh, in his in his gray flag engine, uh, you know, pull and remove and kind of trash collector things and optimize the server, you know, as it's running for these long periods of time. But we did the 15 hours 
to essentially give the Hercules pilots and logistics pilots time to, after a restart, you know, supply these forward bases, um, as well as uh, kind of create these efforts of logistics supply. And then, of course, when the when the when the server does restart after 15 hours, and of course, all the progress is saved of those front lines and, and where the progress is and zones being captured, etc., uh, is all saved. Uh, we have to have a starting amount so that when people spawn in after the server reset, like they're they can't they're not just twiddling their thumbs until a Hercules gets there, which would be annoying as hell. So. Um, but we we at the moment we don't have a way of saving the state of the uh, warehouse contents, and and that's uh, kind of one of the reasons why we have that starting value. Okay, yeah, that's um. So like when I first joined, my very first time was Syria. I was kind of amazed about how many uh, shore ads and man pads there were. So it was definitely a eye opening experience. I didn't really know what I was doing, obviously, but. Uh, it's nice because there's so many people that are on there and there's so many helpful people, especially in the DFA discord. Yeah. And kind of one of the aspects from the get go in the very beginning, um, in kind of this mind barf of a design document that I handed over to Grimes to see if it was all possible is one of the overall elements that we wanted was because we, uh, because we're all grown ups and have lives and 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 limited amount of time, you know, we don't have uh, an ability to do like this uh, glorious looking website where it has like a, a map GCI map on a website and massive amounts of stats uh, on a you know on this on this website, um, and that kind of goes outside the scope of just kind of what we were hoping to create. But since we didn't want to do like a website GCI map, because that's you know, beyond my abilities or any of any of our abilities, I, I feel like, and, and it, more than more, more time than we would, that we would want to put into it when we'd right. rather dedicate, dedicate time to creating these missions is we wanted to utilize everything in game. And, you know, we have, the F10 map that now suddenly we could start drawing uh, icons, drawing shapes on, and inter interfacing through uh, the trigger or uh, triggers and uh, scripting engine to draw on the maps. We wanted we wanted to make it easier for the player um, when they jumped into the server to just be able to see the F10 map. And yeah, it is a little it it uh, of course is a, a little bit of a learning curve um to figure out what's going on but it's at least easy on the eyes to go okay here's a front line uh here's the red side obviously because there's like an actual like uh FIBA kind of line or flock line or however you want to call it where this is the area the battle is taking place and here's some capture zones and they're all na there's names above them and stuff so and and the biggest aspect is uh one of the biggest aspects of the uh, gray flag services we require uh, SRS which is simple radio standalone made by Kiri Bob and um, who's also a DFA member yoink <laughs> and uh, so players really have a much easier time being able to coordinate and be on comms and kind of and, and it's a pretty friendly atmosphere of in terms of you know you get on 26775 and you kind of see what's going on, where people are flying, and just looking at the F10 map, uh, you know, you may just jump in a jet. It might not be a jet you want to fly, but just hop in, take a look at that F10 map, because you'll see where the battle's going on, and kind of see, kind of put together a game plan of what you might want to do. So all the information is already in game, and it uh, it just kind of, kind of keeps it all there as to to an, uh, to an extent avoid alt tabbing out of the game to go to a website to figure out all right well what bases are under contest uh, uh being contested right now because i don't know about you guys but when i alt tab my game a whole bunch it tends to really not enjoy right. that it doesn't so. like it it doesn't like it 
Uh, but what you were saying was is the F10 map. I really enjoy the F10 map. So anybody that's you know new to the server, or joining the server, you get in the server and you go to the F10 map, and you can take a look at all the lattices, and you can see all the capture points, and then you can actually go to the F10 uh, communication menu and get like an update on the lattices, and it will tell you like how many troops, or not troops, but like how many units are remaining at those capture zones. So you can actually put those coordinates of those capture zones into your aircraft or your helicopter and head over there and figure out what you're going to do and then link up with other people on simple radio. So that's always, it's a pretty sweet, pretty sweet deal to, you know, have people come together as teamwork and try to take out these capture zones. So the F-10 map, you guys did a outstanding job. I really like it. Whoever, whoever made it. That was pretty much all Grimes. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of enjoy coming up with fun things to, like with the draw tools, uh, kind of creative things, because uh, it's like all the farps are basically home plate from baseball, and it like fills in the colors as it's caps, and then. Well, I'm, another... I'm, I'm glad that ED actually included those finally, because it really yeah, it really it's... does help out a lot. Yeah, it's immensely helpful. You've heard like just debugging things. Like I, I I wrote a thing that just like traces AI routes. So instead of having to look, look at tack view, I just look at the F10 map and see. Oh, the AI or this is the route they took to get from point A to point B, and it's you know sometimes really buggy. Sometimes it's not it's, efficient. Oh, yeah, you you see what you see what the AI is doing a little bit more clearer, I think. And then, um, but yeah, I had, I had some other code somewhere that. Uh, did you guys ever play Supreme Commander? No. Oh, I wait, know wait. about it. I'm brain farting. It's kind of like uh, it's not quite like uh, uh, Command and Conquer, but it's yeah, it's it's an RTS. Anyway, the point is, yeah. it's like they have a whole part of that game is like sensors and stuff, and how you, multiple units or multiple units have like radars and vision, how they could overlap. But instead of having like distinct circles, it just kind of draws an outline of what's visible by that type of sensor type. So it, you just kind of. You, you basically just draw like hundreds of arcs essentially and uh sorry my kitten's meowing and uh <laughs> you can yeah just get it, it it's it's, been, it's just a clearer way to show like sam threats but that's a little buggy at the moment so it's disabled so i'm curious what the do you have any like stats on like what's the most popular module on the server oh <laughs> uh, yeah i mean and it's also just kind of reflected too from like whenever like the guys over at Hoggett share their stats, but uh, you know, obviously they don't use the two mods we have, but uh, generally it's the F-16 and F-18. And yeah, they're pretty neck to neck. And then like half of that is, is the F-14 or I'd have, to, I'd have to look it up. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty much the F-16 and F-18. They are neck and neck. It's, you know, depending on which day you look at it, one has the lead and then the other has the lead. And then um, it's uh, after the Viper and Hornet, it's um, the Apache. And then it is the Tomcat and, you know, kind of kind of A10C. Uh, yeah, A10C. And it kind of goes down. And actually, the Hercules, Harrier and, Hercules is up there, too. Yeah, um, I think one of the times we looked at the stats, I ain't kidding you. The Hercules was number three. Oh, wow. Um, which blew my mind because, um, you know, it's, it's it's just a it's a free mod and it's an incredible free mod, you know, fully clickable. Uh, there's stations in the back that I haven't flown it myself, but just, you know, watching everyone stream it and, and share screenshots, etc. in the discord, um, you know, it's it looks really fun. Um, but just being able to utilize that Hercules not only in a logistic role of supplying air bases, which I suppose I should have probably touched on earlier, you know, the, the Hercules mod is able to actually airdrop uh, 30 troops into cop combat, as well as an assortment of vehicles uh, into directly into the front lines, you know, wherever you want to drop these vehicles, you can, uh, you know, bring them into the fight. Um, so, and that's kind of one of the other incredible aspects I feel like of gray flag is and 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 just an overall arcing um aspect of kind of any of the missions that I create is like I want the player to essentially I treat it like a sandbox you know I want the player to bring whatever they want to the fight and fight this battle however they see fit 
So when I'm making these missions, I just put myself essentially, I put my red, red four commander hat on and I just go, all right, well, I am the red four commander now. And I know I want to defend this area, this objective. I want to defend this objective from an enemy I know is advancing from the South. And so, um, and that's kind of how I, I treat essentially the gray flag scenarios, uh, in in just a overall design coming coming from a realistic aspect and one of the crazy things of course is like you fly in syria and players kind of are alarmed of how many sams there are inside syria and uh, if they ever happen to do a little bit of research into syria's air defense network uh, they may come to realize that that's actually pretty pretty damn close as far as even the locations of some of these uh, Syrian air defense sites, these SAM sites. Um, but um, overall, the gray flag, you know, we 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 want to foster teamwork and realism and you know coordination with uh, you know players between players. Um, and that's, that's one of the nice things about discord at least is, you know, if you're not in the game just yet, uh, or maybe perhaps you are in the game, um, you know, at least discord can be used on your phone if you need to, if, and, and we have a bunch of roles that you can kind of tag and say, Hey, uh, I need, we need some cap up here on, uh, the a lattice to the North. Uh, if, if, is there anyone interested in doing some cap for us and kind of coordinate with other players because, um, one of the things kind of some other PVE servers that we kind of see just generally out there is players kind of, they hop into a PVE server and they've just put their blinders on and they're in their own little world. And they, um, they go deep into enemy territory and they do a bombing run and they, you know, maybe they have a MiG 21 come after them or something, or maybe they don't, but there, there's not, a whole lot of coordination there and that's kind of one of the aspects that we wanted to try to avoid and essentially just in the way that we designed the mission itself i think uh lends pretty well to uh fostering team play and uh you know coordinating because if a single a10 loads up on uh four triple ejector racks of ordnance as well as uh maybe a, a fuel tank and some gbu uh 10s or something or uh, GBU 31s and flies uh, 150 miles on his own tip of the spear, uh, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that the C-130 was number three at the time, but I do believe it, though. Uh, same with the UH-60, because sometimes I'll be streaming, and it might be like eight or nine like C-130s flying, doing supply runs to you know, the front line or to uh, you know airfields to supply more weapons. Um, so it's pretty cool to see the C-130 being used that way, especially with the UH-60, because uh, a lot of people use the UH-60 to transport troops to capture these zones. Oh, yeah. Um, as, yeah, as well as the C-130, or any kind of other, other helicopter, of course. Yeah. Well, it's, but it, it's, it's it interesting really blew to see, my mind. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because like, there is a C-130 module coming out for DCS, so um, to see like other servers you know, possibly putting that in there as well, just the logistics of the C-130 kind of blows my mind uh, what what can come, you know? Yeah, we had people coming out of the woodwork that were joining, like just out of the woodwork, joining the Discord. They downloaded DCS in order to play in Gray Flag using the C-130, and they had come from, uh, you know, Flight Sim 2020 or... <laughs> uh you know what are some of the other civilian kind of flight sims and they just wanted to they just wanted to hop in and fly logistics and they were just blown away about the combat happening and you know maybe someone in a, in a hornet next to them flying formation and they're they're it really was uh pretty cool to see it just ate it all up yeah it's pretty cool well, to see especially with uh like when the c-130 module actually comes out to have that full fidelity clickable cockpit how many people would actually you know come over just to fly you know, a full fidelity study level. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, logistical air, aircraft. What were you going to say, Graham? Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's an underserved part of the game. You know, the, the 
slightly larger logistics than what a helicopter can do, but you know, still affecting the battle space. And it's just hasn't been present in the game at all yeah. for like the last, you know. I just years I mean, I don't really. Stuff. I can't even think of any other aircraft that actually did do the role of logistics. So it's, I think it's still pretty new. Yeah, um, I think so too. Yeah, I think the like blue flag had that thing. You could like take a TF-51 and... Right, like but that's Chinese completely board. different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, same point, but completely different. I mean, this, it's it's pretty funny to see like sometimes if they load like a striker in the C-130 and the, the turret like hangs out the top of the <laughs> C-130. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, this is some weird animation um, mod where the yeah. turret points straight up. And it, same, it, it is with artillery pieces is the funniest one, is because there's this you know this long tube sticking out the top. Right, that's what I was. Johnson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, uh, so obviously the server runs you know twenty four seven and resets every fifteen hours. But on Wednesdays there's a special oh, yeah. day if you want to talk about that. Yeah, we uh, pretty quickly got as the server released um back in may of 2022 um fairly quickly after that we kind of it it really kind of took flight and and some some people and now i would change the weather uh, from from day to day to an extent because we would constantly have mission uh updates and you know fixes going in and uh because it was kind of really in the open beta phase back then um where i essentially damn near pretty much released it without grimes's blessing and and then asked for forgiveness later but uh we wanted people wanted uh some weather and they wanted to do case three and they wanted more of a challenge uh just from a a more all-weather aspect and and it also represented kind of a cool team play aspect where helicopters could get in under the weather and buddy lays for jets flying above the clouds so on wednesdays we have what's called of course weather wednesdays and we uh just have all kinds of different crazy weather happening whether it be uh weather it'd be wind or uh obviously a lot of clouds uh rain etc or sandstorm low visibility uh um kind of sandstorms especially on the persian gulf i kind of do that mainly because um the terrain on the persian gulf gets really kind of high uh, so doing more cloudy storms where you can only se- select one altitude layer of clouds uh doesn't work too well the more north you go in uh, persian gulf so i kind of do some different aspects on the persian gulf one uh, to yeah, an extent but Clouds are clouds are based on sea level, and when you get to about you know a mile above sea level, yeah, all of a sudden that cloud that's in there at a mile becomes right in the middle of the capture area, and you can't really see anything. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, on on the others, um, uh, some of the other days that we do, we have our weather Wednesdays that we do, and uh, now recently, um, that we have kind of a little tool slash program that uh, one of our members Art made where it's kind of a little mi- mission swapper that I can uh, essentially drop in a mission update and it will select, the server will select that mission on the next load. Uh, so that kind of enabled us to do more kind of special or unique days. So uh, we do uh, Friday night lights on the servers where it is, it uh, the server restart, when the server restarts, it's like, 7 p.m. and essentially goes through the 15 hours from then on of being overnight. So if you want some darkness, uh, come fly on Fridays. Hmm. I didn't know about Friday Night Lights, but Art did tell me to ask you about that uh, program that he made. Oh, yeah. Definitely a handy tool. Um, so I did have a question from my stream today, and I know this is going to be a, a difficult question. It's probably way over my head, but it's for Grimes. <laughs> it's um, what was the most challenging part for coding Gray Flag? Uh, probably the bubble script, uh, because that so like that started off as an evolution of you know what we've been doing for Sunday sorties, where Gray would have this mission template with like you know eight thousand units in it or something like that, and then he would go in Oops. and then. 
he mm-hmm. he'd go in and delete everything that he didn't want to have take place in that mission. So like every week. Yeah, every week. So like this was like we did it first on the Persian Gulf. So like you know, capturing the islands there. And so like everything like Shiraz, Kerman, just they just get deleted. And because like, hey, you're not gonna go up there, it doesn't matter. And you know, every single unit would be loaded in. And then like but, uh, we get the persistent script at that point would basically be like, okay, well, this unit's dead, and it would just like cause an explosion or despawn the unit. And it, you know, did that all at the mission start, which I mean, it's okay ish, but it, uh, you know, has some limited issues there. And then I decided to start doing a bubble script where you, you know, take you, we actually start with everything where is despawned. It doesn't exist in the mission technically. And that's like how you define it. And uh, you place a bunch of uh, trigger zones around the map. And it's just checking every single unit that every single aircraft where it's at and be like, oh, hey, this aircraft is this distance and this thing is classed as a SA-10. So therefore I need to spot, needs to spawn in whenever, you know, whenever a unit gets within X distance of that, uh, you know, trigger zone, essentially. Okay. Gotcha. And it's just lots of optimizations with that because, you know, if you have 30 players and you have, you know, 800 bubbles, well, not, not zombie, but let's, go, let's call it 50 bubbles. So that's 50 times 30 checks each time it's checking the position of every single unit compared to each bubble, which is not really very efficient at all. Right. And so I created like virtual bubbles where it starts like to combine, like, hey, these two bubbles are close to each other, but nothing's really close at all to them. So I just, you know, go up a level, you know, multiply the distance that's checking it by and, you know, averaging the point of that for that point or whatever, and then checking it, you know, checking that distance and then also checking it less often. And yeah, and then also it's, 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 it's spawning everything in too, which is another big kind of hassle. And like, if you ever look at the attack views, you see some SAM site and it shows up like 50 times. It's because it was spawned in and despawned in like 50 other times prior to that. Interesting. Okay. So and, and that has its own set of overhead because, you know, Mist has to be like, oh my God, what's this group going to have, have in it? And then SLMod is like, oh, this unit exists now. I need, the, I need that information for stats. And it, it's, you know, both of them are kind of, both Mist and SLMod are kind of set up to be run with anything, not so much, uh, you know, very specific circumstances. So, you know, those just have some automatic overhead attached to them. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin and I don't even understand any of that stuff. But let's just say like, Today, you know, Dumb Tricker wants to start a multiplayer server. What would you direct somebody that's like brand new? What would you like send them to the hog at Wiki or like to learn scripting basically to make a mission for multiplayer? Yeah, I mean, or any, any single player mission. But um, just the mission editor forums is pretty good overall in terms of just answering questions. Um, you know, for, for a while there, I felt like I was like the only person on you know working the hotlines essentially answering questions but uh <laughs> you know over the years tons of other people have created their own set of scripts you know um and, and done some really crazy cool things that like i was like wait you, you could do it that way cool i should probably figure that out at some point um so yeah, were you was, when you were working the hotlines were you uh like one of those chat people that like if you go to a certain website it's like hey i'm within 10 miles of you <laughs> no, yeah, it, was like... it may have been like that on the, uh, the Hoggett <laughs> Discord, possibly. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, obviously. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, yeah, answering. Someone asks a question, like, oh, it hasn't been answered. I'll, for, well, we'll look at it, figure it out, and answer. So we had another question. And I mean, I've been wanting this feature for a long time for DCS, and that's like a, like a live ATIS thing. So I know I. I know you like capture weather to start the mission, but in the future, is there anything like in that you can think of where it would take like a METAR of all these places? And then, yeah, I mean, there are scripts that already do that. Um, like I know Hoggett does it, and they have like a little. I think you know, they have like something that feeds into their SRS. into like an SRS yeah. uh, channel, and, and it's you know you use information alpha, you know whatever runway. Hmm, okay. And, a Napa weather. I forget what all. I haven't played on there in a while, but uh, yeah. So that stuff's existed for a while, and in you know some of our servers have things where they you know actually take weather from a location and then inject it into the mission file that gets loaded, and you know it, so like the real world time of day and what real world weather you know that's what <laughs> happens you know so 
Do you know what that, do you know what that's called? Because like I didn't know that existed. I don't know off the off, off the top of my head, but like I know Hawkeye's been using it forever. And like you know, if you go and you play on the Caucasus the Caucasus server in the winter time, and it's like this winter shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're in, <laughs> it's, it's, that's it's a feature. I, I mean, that's a feature I've been wanting for a while. I mean, obviously, I want like DCS or ED to implement that into DCS, where you can have like a yeah, function to that, download that, that the live nice. weather. I mean, at the very least, just have like, you know, you set up a bunch of different preset times, time of days, and then also weathers, you know, different weather things, and you can like whatever rules you want, and it just picks one at random. Mm-hmm. That would be perfectly fine by me. Right. Rather than just having to like, oh, I have this mission. Okay. I want this mission a day. I want this mission at day, but it's snowing. Right. You know, it's. it's yeah, because um, Yeah, like the. We haven't really. I mean, because um, there's no effect for like snow, but I think if you if you make it cold enough, like there's rain snow or snow yeah. showers. Uh, yeah, even on the uh, built-in like cloud presets, um, if you make the temperature low enough, uh, it will snow. Which I actually discovered on Gray Flag PG server because the uh, temperature started out at like 24 degrees centigrade and up by Kerman, it was snowing. So, hmm. okay, cool. That'd be kind of sweet. That Kerman's up at like I think five thousand, fifty five hundred feet or something like that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, if a new player was to join, um, what would you direct this new player to? Uh, anybody listening that's new, what would you direct them to do to learn about gray flag? Oh, sure. Yeah. So uh, we have a kind of a. Uh, a few documents that we have, or I'd, I'd say the first thing to do is uh, uh, to join our discord, which is, you know, HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash discord dot GG forward slash death from above is our invite link. And uh, once you join that, um, it is, if you don't know what discord is, it's essentially like the, uh, the hyper lobby. <laughs> dating myself here of uh of the gaming world these days i feel like um where it's just a a a voice chat and uh also a text chat program to kind of coordinate with your friends on and play and hang out but uh once you join the discord there is a channel there's a whole uh, gray flag section within the discord and like the topmost channel i think is uh the how to play uh, channel and in there has uh, you j- if you just scroll up ever so slightly there are there's just you know some brief verbiage on uh, some things that you'll need as as well as uh, essentially a document for each server so there's a gray flag Syria document and there's a gray flag Persian Gulf document and inside those documents are like Intel on the mission kind of backstory like timeline kind of stuff uh if you want to if you know one was wanting to dive into that um and as well as like uh some kind of cool uh satellite uh like intel cards uh satellite views on bases and um some stuff like that so as well as uh a general how to play uh gray flag in each of those documents so how the lattices work with uh, pictures and um, representations of, you know, the objectives and capture zones and what to look for. You know, we have like strategic SAMs that are shown on the F10 map, you know, all kinds of different targets to go after if people weren't wanting to necessarily go after the capture zones. If someone was wanting to put together like a deep strike kind of mission, on their own or with some friends uh we've even had you know entire virtual squadrons essentially uh on their squadron nights uh raid the server which i i love you know that's a you know absolutely come on down um you know use it uh and abuse it gray flag is here for you um where they they raid they join in they raid and they do like a deep strike mission that they that they want to do on their own like they they find a target in the server and they put together their own package and their own uh, target set and they're you know and they go and they go and they fly it uh, I love it I love 
uh, that uh, kind of sandbox element of, you know, players being able to complete the campaign how they see fit and uh, do whatever they want because uh, Grimes and I will try to have the campaign react to you. You also have a, um, I think you have a YouTube video as well, like a how-to, right? Oh, yeah, that's in there as well. I uh, I was like 30 minutes into making uh, another video, like a how to how to play video for the Persian Gulf server. Um, but I was like 30 minutes in and then looked up at OBS and it was frozen. So that didn't pan out. But yes, uh, I, I made a how to play video on my YouTube and it's also posted in that how to play channel. So if you just go to YouTube and type in like gray flag, how to play or just look for uh, gray flag uh, uh, and as well as like gray wolf. Yeah, we'll, we'll put um, it in the description as well. Sure. So people can just click on it. Yeah, I made that video before we integrated the C-130. So just realize that, um, you know, the C-130 isn't talked about in that video. But um, it is in the documents as well as, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, speak up on the Discord. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot of people that love to fly that C-130 and are more than happy to help you learn uh, the Hercules. So. Yeah, we'll it make sure we simple too. Yeah, it, it, it it's is easy to fly and yeah, we'll yeah. make sure we put links in the description for both the mods. Um, do you guys see any future maps like expanding to future maps? Or are you guys just gonna stick to Syria? Oh and yes. Golf? So um, with um, essentially uh, the analogy, I would say between Grimes and myself is the one that he made that. Uh, that I, uh, you know, have a sensible chuckle to because it's entirely true. He is the uh, Steve Wozniak to my Steve, uh, or he's the Woz to my Steve Jobs. And uh, he has coded this entire gray flag engine um, to be portable to any sort of map that we want to do. So basically, um, you know, any kind of future map that comes out, eh, all, we, all I have to do is load into the mission editor and start plonking down zones with properties in these zones with certain strings and certain values that tie into his entire engine that he's created where, um, you know, it's, it essentially the cogs meet uh, together between my work inside the mission editor uh, and that's one cog and his work in the engine is the other cog. And, you know, if, if I, as long as my smooth brain monkey, uh, finger typing, etc., can work it out in the mission editor, it's going to plug into his engine and, and, and make this entire gray flag scenario happen for any map. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm currently working, uh, feverishly on a, new Syria version um, where it's going to feature four lattices but be way less in your face with like Syrian super wes of Sam's etc and it is going to be more of a essentially coin uh, if you're not familiar with that phrase is counterinsurgency and um, it's going to be a more of a more of a fighting fighting against uh more derpy armor and technicals and there may be a few surprises thrown your way and uh so that's going to be on syria and it's going to feature essentially much more of the map instead of just lebanon because that's kind of one of the biggest requests that we've had in some of our player surveys is uh we want to fly over more of the syrian terrain because it is you know argu arguably the, at the moment uh you know the most fun map in terms of terrain features and and just detail um it's it's a really great helicopter map and so with the syria coin version that we're essentially um uh, making we're, we're we're taking a fun aspect to it and making it uh, tie into the the whole command and conquer universe as to where the brotherhood of nod has taken over portions of syria and uh and so that's going to be the kind of coin aspect for it and and be four lattices 
that's going to feature, you know, more east, way on the east side and work its way around around on that large river, which is what the Tigris or Euphrates. I can't quite remember brain farting um, and, you know, work its way up emanating to an extent of the ISIS fight. Um, but I didn't necessarily want to want to, to call use. It ISIS. Yeah, I didn't want to call it ISIS <laughs> and I didn't want to, sh- uh, you know, uh pigeonhole myself into trying to recreate the entire isis scenario because uh good lord that we only have two coalitions so yes I mean, come on yeah so uh we're gonna make it a little uh different and, and kind of go more fictional with it but it's still gonna be fun and it's still gonna be gray flag and uh but yes future maps uh, you know, I'm really uh, jonesing for the Kona map, Joan, jonesing for the Sinai map. You know, I may uh, may someday give the South Atlantic map another look after it's had some more time in the oven. Um, you know, I'm I'm open to anything. Yeah, so, and the other thing too is that uh, you know, with DCS and the map sizes, it's it kind of is kind of become a problem with people who do un- uninstall maps just because they're like, well, I don't want to play on this map because I'm not playing, you know, I'm not playing it right now because it takes up too much freaking space. You know, if that freaking whole SSD is dedicated to just a one game install. So, you know, knowing which maps are popular is a factor. And then also, um, you know, we also kind of want to try and not have 30 different servers where one server has, you know, hosting this one version of the mission. So, you know, maybe that will help too. Like, just get mm-hmm. our population of people that just love playing on the two servers, and then you know, alternate between uh, missions on whichever maps we uh, have missions for. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy the uh, South Atlantic map. There's not many multiplayer, you know, servers with it right now. Um, obviously, I think people are waiting for it to be, you know, finished a little bit more, like you said. But yeah, I really enjoy the South Atlantic map, and I think that would offer. Oh man, it's such a it's such a huge map. Um, I couldn't even imagine all of what people are going to be doing with that, especially when the C one thirty mod gets you know released. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and that's tricky too because like if you have a if you have a capture the Falklands and you have like seriously eight hours of dead time to get over to the you know South America proper. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> flight, man. It's a long way. It's a long flight. It's an hour at least. Yeah, that's you think yeah. Great so Flight we, PG is bad? Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, if you, if you persist the uh, ships, it's you know it takes time to sail. I mean, they're, they're they go fast, but they're not that fast, right? Um, and I think the last question here is, uh, I mean, obviously this server is amazing, and I know you guys are proud of it. But what is the someone asked uh, what is the most proud thing that you can think of that you've done for the gray flag server? I don't know, Grimes. Do you have any idea most proud most proud thing we are of the Gray Flag server? Um, uh, I think I, the fact that it's taken off. I mean, you know, like you have to understand. Like, I you know, both Grimes and I've been playing for like a long ass time, and very long. Just the fact that like if we had a server back when it was just like Black Shark, right, and it would be made maintained popularity like the entire time, that's like one thing. But you know, it's another one. There's like a thousand servers online nowadays, and with virtual machines, yeah, people are able to spin up a ton more servers really easily, especially with a dedicated server aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, to uh, DCS because yeah, you know, we didn't have that for like the longest time either. Um, so yeah, just the fact that it's you know pretty popular most of the time or in populated specifically is uh yeah i I would i would uh i would i would answer four grimes on on a certain aspect and then give my answer is that uh my answer for grimes would be uh none of this would be possible without the the engine that he made in as to where i can literally have 7800 units in a mission but none of them are spawned we have 16, until PG. So what's that? PG's got 16,000. So, you know, higher than yeah. by bit. The same. Yeah, please, I mean, please get the numbers right, Gray. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, I mean, none of these are going to be spawned until players get close enough, you know, to be, to be relevant. And, and, and so, you know, uh, Sam's 
are going to spawn farther out when the player is is farther out so that the the sams can spin up and you know become an actual threat realistically medium range shams not as far out short range shams you know less far out than that and 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 so he's got this whole tiered system of when things are able to spawn and it's you know this whole staggered aspect to essentially save performance and you know if someone were to just take a track file and open up an admission editor they would probably just go cross-eyed at the amount of units i have in there um because it's staggering and to staggering to the extent that grimes literally opens up the 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 mission in the mission editor and his freaking computer crashes because his ram has entirely been used up i have so many units in there but yet we hop into the server and you know you get an amazing amount of frames we did have some stuttering issues early on in the summer that we had to overcome which was seemingly due to hashtag DCS things and patches. I don't know. Well, oh, and also just the sheer number of units spawned in because we it, it initially was everything could could been spawned in. And oh way. yeah, and uh, I actually I tightened the weapon, so I just as a test thing, I, I fired a slam off, and it like flew over like most of Lebanon, and then went somewhere east into. Wait, well, it went right through <laughs> Damascus. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and it, but the funny thing is, like you watched it, watched it on attack view. You see this this slam just flying around all of a sudden, you know, things pop into existence. And yeah, then every it, objective used to spawn. Used and they to and then they'd pop out, you know, once they once the missile passed by a certain, you know, time, you know, later, basically. <laughs> and yeah, is it's like, holy cow, this is spawning in thousands of units over, you know, uh as, as it's flying in is it's just a bit too much because, you know, also like, you know, you have 30 people or mm-hmm. whatever uh, flying everywhere. And uh, it's a lot more area. It's a lot more bubbles that can exist at this, at a given time. They're not all within the same. Yeah, but, and you, and you area. mentioned the key word there being not only players uh, fire off these bubbles to spawn baddies in uh, weapons do as well, because we, yeah. you know, we wanted this to be as much of a sandbox for the player to fight the fight that they wanted to fight and attack the entire campaign that they how they say uh saw fit you know if the player wants to use a slammer and fire off this missile 200 miles away all right we're going to make that weapon trigger bubbles so that when the slammer gets there there's going to be targets that they can hit so you know it's it's just incredible to me what what he's been able to accomplish with this whole you know scripting engine and 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 the gray flag uh gray flag engine that he's done and I, all i do i'm just a dummy that sits in the mission editor and plays his units and you know ticks the boxes to tie into his engine essentially and um and yeah w- and with that i would basically say my answer would be the most proud thing is just the community as well as the team play and the and the fostering uh community that that we have as to where you know people can hop in and and uh and it's it's a welcome we try to be well as welcoming as as possible and and it's it's i feel like it it does an amazing job fostering team play where you know people jump in they jump on srs you know maybe they're a little bit shy so they just do some text chat first or something but then someone responds right away over the radios and hey let's get it let's get you yeah i'll i'll escort i'll escort you balls deep into uh syrian airspace all this i'll i'll get your ass into uh shiraz uh to do a deep strike you know or i'll provide some top cover for your hercules ass to drop some troops over the over the capture zone you know so it's there's a lot of team play aspect that i think it really it really shines in gray flag cool well I really appreciate all of your guys' time, and uh, obviously I enjoy the server, so thank you for all your hard work, Grimes and Grey Wolf, for putting that in there, and everybody else that's involved with the DFA. I well, really appreciate you guys joining us and uh, giving us your side of the story. Well, thank you very much for having us, Tricker, and I uh, do apologize uh, that uh, we probably went longer than your last episode. It's okay. I mean, uh, I enjoyed talking to you guys i always <laughs> enjoy to talking cover. to you guys there, there was a lot to cover but uh i think everyone is going to be excited to hear everything that you guys talked about 
especially Grimes' cats. Yeah, they uh, peed on my floor while we were talking. <laughs> oh, God. <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, guys. So that was that was good. Cool.